Hi, Matt Casey, Data Science Content Lead with Snorkel AI, here today with Max Williams, a Machine Learning Success Manager, also at Snorkel AI. Max, could you introduce yourself a little bit further? I'm Max Williams, uh, recently with Snorkel. Uh, for uh, many years, I was with uh, Wells Fargo's AI Center of Excellence. We're here today to talk about a large financial institution that is building out a, a better system for helping out customers. Can you tell me more about that? The intent is to offer clients and customers white glove service, no matter which channel they may be engaging with the organization or the brand through, and no matter what product they may be uh, interacting with at that particular moment. So a good example might be, you know, a customer making a, a transaction and they have some kind of issue with your mobile app, they maybe post a review, and then they call in to maybe a call center uh, to try and remedy the situation. Right, and I understand that this is, a, this is a big initiative, but it started with one particular piece, and you mentioned call center, and that's where we start. Can you tell me more specifically about that portion? Yeah, so call center is often a uh, point of emphasis or focus on a lot of large organizations. It's a big expense. So understanding why the customer or client is calling in uh, is often like a place where we see things start a lot. So what specific solution were they trying to develop and what was in the way? You know, trying to have a robust, scalable solution that can automatically understand why a customer was calling into a call center, which then feeds many like uh, downstream systems. So if you're going back to that omni-channel voice of customer initiative, um, that's a key um, element that fits into your holistic customer profile. Regardless of who is interacting with that customer next, you want to understand uh, why that customer had an engagement with the call center recently, and you want to understand why they may have been calling in. And the challenge was that, you know, with a lot of traditional approaches, either they're just not scalable. A lot of times these are uh, manual efforts. So you have people listening to phone calls, trying to uh, manually categorize why someone was calling in. And then secondly, it's really hard to keep the organization evolving along with the context that uh, your organization is in. So a great example is the pandemic. Um, the reasons why customers were calling into the call center months before the pandemic uh, really took hold are a lot different than the reasons why people were calling in even, you know, a few months into the pandemic. So that organizational agility, I think, presents another big challenge that, you know, traditional approaches really kind of uh, come up against. Well, I don't, I don't think any of us are wishing for or expecting another pandemic in the near future. What other kinds <laughs> of earth-shaking events might uh, might throw a curveball for a call center. Yeah, I like to use the pandemic because it's such an extreme example that many folks can relate to, but really it's it can be you rolled out a new feature to your app and that created a different user experience and people are a little confused so they're calling in. Or maybe you rely on another third party that provides some part of service and they rolled out an update and that creates some kind of challenge. So lots of kind of everyday things can really um, be enough to cause challenges on the agility end of the spectrum. So we started by talking about how this would work for individual callers, but what I'm hearing now is this would also help with pretty broad trends that would help uh, speed things along in the call center by helping the call center operators know what trend is happening right now. The vision is there's some trend that's going on, uh, a larger scale trend, we want to be able to pick up on that trend as fast as possible so that we can react to it. One of the, I think, biggest drivers for uh, the omni-channel voice of customer program or initiatives is often better reaction time to any number of events that may be uh, going on at that particular moment in time. So we have an end state desired, which is something that would help identify why people are calling into the call center. And we have an existing manual process that is difficult to scale. How did Snorkel help? Programmatic labeling and, and the Snorkel approach are really well suited for this kind of problem. You oftentimes have 
operational teams who have been, in this case, looking through call center transcripts and understanding why users are calling into the call center, they have such deep domain expertise. It's really pretty incredible. Being able to more effectively collaborate with those subject matter experts, I think is paramount. The other part is just kind of scale and agility, which we spoke about before. So, I mean, the team had been at this for a long time, uh, maybe years, we would say, and still kind of struggling to, to build out a, a robust enough solution that could adapt to changes. And so within just a couple of months, they were able to kind of put in place those programmatic labels across hundreds of categories or reasons or intents why customers were engaging with the call center. Um, so those two things in particular were, were really impactful. Snorkel flow works primarily on labeling functions, which you alluded to, but what kinds of labeling functions were particularly effective in this case? Was it substrings or ontologies or what? I think there's a good mix. One of the really cool parts about snorkel flow is it is pretty user friendly. So if you have some folks who maybe have that deep domain expertise, and I'll say maybe they're analytically savvy, those folks can be really, really effective in the snorkel flow platform. So sometimes things as simple as keywords can be done by people with a lot of domain expertise, but a little bit of um, analytical experience. And then maybe in the middle, you have folks who have uh, lots of analytical experience and they can write SQL and do more sophisticated labeling functions. Uh, maybe they can even incorporate a sentiment analysis from like the Spacey package. And then you have your data science users who um, are looking to use all the different labeling functions at their disposal, whether that's, you know, actually a, an AI model under the hood that they're using for the labeling function purpose. Or maybe that's, like I said, a spacey model or anything in between. Folks with different experiences and skill sets were all able to contribute, um, you know, in their own way. And I understand that this project has moved forward. What's at stake today? So the team is looking to um, deploy this version, first version, uh, into production uh, shortly. Uh, they're pretty excited about it. I'd say they're even more excited to uh, move on to you know, 1.2, uh, because there's new features and functions available in Snorkel Flow, and they think they have um, a pretty good grasp on how to tackle some uh, more problematic areas. But they're very excited to get something out the door to start generating value and to iterate on the next version. And what's the scale of the impact? How many calls are we talking about per day that this model will be doing some work on? Probably in the millions of calls a day. Um, and then as far as like dollar impact, I think there's lots of cost reductions and operational efficiencies. There's also some harder to, um, harder to quantify benefits too, that I would put in the strategic bucket and maybe can go back to something we discussed previously, which is adapting to those trends as they happen. It's really hard to, to put a value on those kinds of things, um, but it's definitely something that the team was uh, incorporating and in kind of the, the overall benefits of, of the solution that they're working with on Snorkel Flow. This is part of a broader initiative for omni-channel customer experience. Um, can you tell us what comes next? Different team wants to understand um, if they, what insights they could derive from customer reviews, very similar to um, the call center, but maybe focus a little bit on a specific product like the mobile app or maybe the, the website. The team leverages some external parties to provide both data and insights from that data. So as an example was a customer leaving this review because of some you know, product improvement that was made. Maybe the login experience is much easier now. Right now they get a bunch of data and insights from a vendor. They could do that with Snorkel Flow and Snorkel also allows them to address the call center use cases and really everything in between 
that's really a big deal that the team's pretty excited about. But when you have one consistent solution that you can apply across the entire customer journey, you start to realize a bunch of benefits, including overhead reduction. You're able to ensure that the insights that the mobile and digital teams develop fit nicely and tell a, co a cohesive story with other areas where customers and customers may be interacting with the organization. So Snorkelflow has so far been used to improve the call center experience for this particular financial institution on both a micro and a macro level. They're looking to again improve that model to make it even better and expand their efforts to connect all of this across all of the customer touch points for the financial institution. Is there anything that I missed? <laughs> That's quite a lot. Um, yeah, I think we nailed it and uh, pretty cool to see um, what these teams are able to do and how excited they are about finally being able to take a real meaningful crack at something that's so strategic for many of the groups and, you know, candidly is, is quite uh, going to be quite meaningful for their business and their customer experience. All right. Well, Max, thanks a lot for your time and uh, we'll talk again soon. Sounds good. Thanks.